What's going on, NFL fans? Welcome back to Touchdown Kingdom, the home of all the latest NFL news and content. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to like, comment your predictions, and subscribe as we will be pumping out videos such as this one consistently. A new series that is going to begin today on this channel is the analysis and predictions for each division heading into the 2023 NFL season. The NFL is an unpredictable league and there will surely be some misses, but based on the information we have now, these are predictions with reasoning for every NFL team. Today's division is the AFC East and before diving into the teams, this is probably the most competitive division in all of football, with three teams believing they have their Super Bowl window now. There is most likely going to be a lot of fans of these teams trying to argue their way out of our prediction, and they could be right, because there is so much competition and any of these teams could slide into the playoffs and none of us would be surprised. The format of these videos moving forward will be a small summary of the team and their offseason, and then at the end we will reveal the records of each team. We are starting with the New England Patriots. Truth be told, this is by far the least talented roster in the division. They don't have many standout groups besides their edge rushers with Matt Judon and Josh Uche, their receiving room is poor, and they are relying on Mac Jones for another season to get them into the playoffs. Without their fantastic coaching, their record would be much lower than it was, and Belichick is always going to find a way to make this team competitive. And I think most of the Patriots games will be very close, but there just is not enough talent on this team today to put them in Super Bowl contention. Last season, they were able to fight week in and week out in order to just miss out on the playoffs in week 18. We think that their defense will be fantastic with the addition of our number two corner in the draft at pick number 17, Christian Gonzalez. He's gonna help blanket receivers while their D-line gets to the quarterback. However, their passing attack is looking like one of the worst in football. Ramondre Stevenson is a fantastic running back, and in order for them to reach the playoffs or go further in this division, I think that Stevenson would have to have an all-pro type season, or Mac Jones would have to take a massive step. The Dolphins are getting to be a complete football team. When Tua was healthy last season, they had a fantastic offense with one of the best passing attacks in football and the best wide receiver duo in the NFL. It is so hard to rank this team because we think they are incredible, but the health of Tua is in question and it is hard to predict what will happen with his head injuries. They made some huge improvements to their defense this offseason with the addition of Jalen Ramsey and South Carolina cornerback Cam Smith in the second round. This will help their secondary, as it became apparent last season Xavier Howard was losing a step. Xavier Howard can still be a good player, but they should do their best to keep him in zone coverage rather than man against the top wide receivers. Jalen is no longer easily the best corner in football, but he is top five and fantastic, and Cam Smith has the potential to be really good and follow in the footsteps of past USC cornerback first rounder JC Horn. Another very underrated move this offseason was their signing of David Long, a linebacker who will help in both coverage and the run game, and they signed him to a two-year deal with only $6.5 million guaranteed. His health has been an issue, but if he stays on the field, he is a huge upgrade to their weak linebacker core. Their D-line has some great talent with Jalen Phillips and Christian Wilkins, and this is going to be one of the most fun teams to watch this season. They have a huge opportunity, and if Tua is able to play all 17 games, they could easily finish first in the division and make a run at the Lombardi Trophy. The New York Jets. All we heard last season is that they were a quarterback away. And it seemed true, with their defense being fourth best overall with the fourth least points and the fourth least yards against. What is even more impressive about that is that the Jets offense was constantly punting or turning the ball over, which kept their defense on the field for longer than many other of the top defenses in the league. The story of the offseason for the Jets was Aaron Rodgers, and they got him. The man who won back-to-back -back MVPs just a year and a half ago is coming into this season healthy with the Offensive Rookie of the Year Garrett Wilson, a possible Offensive Rookie of the Year candidate in Brees Hall at running back, hopefully a healthy offensive line, and his offensive coordinator he won those MVPs with in Green Bay, Nathaniel Hackett. This division is so close in talent it is hard to predict, and in all honesty, all of them could finish one and one against each other. With Aaron Rodgers coming in, the Jets hope to repeat what Matt Stafford did with the Rams and what Tom Brady did with the Bucks. 
Aaron Rodgers has weapons in G-Dub 17, Brees, Alan Lazard, McCole Hardman, and Tyler Conklin. The offensive play calling has to be good from Hackett, and the Jets have to keep the offense on the field to allow their defense to dominate the way they have with the addition of Will McDonald in the first round to add to their edge rush. The Jets undoubtedly have the best cornerback trio in football with Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, and Michael Carter in the slot, who is one of the most underrated players in football and graded out as the 18th best corner by Pro Football Focus. The Jets are going to be a fun and interesting team to watch this season, and if Aaron Rodgers returns to his 2021 form, they could also make a run at the Lombardi Trophy. While the Bills have not made the offseason improvements we expected them to after another disappointing playoff performance, we cannot undermine their dominance of this division since Tom Brady left the Patriots. A big addition they just recently made was edge rusher Leonard Floyd, which will be a bolster to their pass rush and hopefully Greg Rousseau begins to dominate this year for the Bills. Their defense is getting older now, and this seems like it could be their last year with the core of Trey White, Jordan Poyer, and Micah Hyde, and now that Trey Edmonds is on the Bears, they have a weak linebacking core outside of their star Matt Milano. In the first round, they drafted the tight end one, Dalton Kincaid, who will most likely play a lot out of the slot and be a great possession receiver for the Bills, similar to what they had when they had Cole Beasley. The Bills have had a boring offseason compared to the Dolphins and Jets, but they still have the possibility of signing DeAndre Hopkins, and it is still hard to move them back from first place despite the lack of offseason moves. And they still have the opportunity to make a deep playoff run this year with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs leading the charge. Overall, this is certainly one of the most difficult divisions to rank, especially among the top three teams. Two of them have made drastic moves this offseason, while the team that has recently dominated the division has been more or less complacent in the Bills, who will once again look to make a Super Bowl push. As always, it most likely won't turn out exactly how we think, but we'd love to hear your guys' opinions in the comment section. Our final record prediction is that the Patriots will finish in last with a record of 7-10, and 10. the Dolphins will finish in third with a record of 10-7, and 7. The Jets will finish in second with a record of 11 and 6, and the Bills will once again finish in first place with a record of 12 and 5. If you like this style of video and would like to watch all of the next breakdowns of each division, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you won't miss our next divisional showdowns. Thank you, and we'll see you next time at the Touchdown Kingdom.